Hello and welcome back to Jay Kernifer Astrology. This is take two, a reattempt at the audio. I have my mic closer here, brought this table out, and it's not dawn or dusk. So the birds should be a little bit less chatty. Hopefully also iMovie will pick up my voice as primary over those chirpy birds so that when I go back in and do the edits, it'll be minimal this time because I don't have too much time before this full moon. I wanna get you guys prepared and I do have a few other things I'm juggling on my plate. I'll throw in some text and graphics to help everyone follow along and trusting that the audio is going to work better this time around and That'll be able to get everything done. We're here to discuss the upcoming full moon, 13 degrees of Sagittarius on Saturday, June 3rd or Sunday, June 4th, depending on where in the world you're tuning in from. If you're new here, I'd like to thank you in advance for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. These are non-monetary ways that you can give back and support the channel. We are building a community of cosmic collaborators here. So if there's anything weighing on your mind, you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I love hearing about your placements. We're piecing this information together. I'm disseminating it, but together we're building a community where we can come and collaborate without fear of judgment for being ourselves and exploring our open minds. My name is Jenny Kern, and I'm a holistic astrologer who transforms lives through the medium of astrology. I use placidious, traditional, equal, and whole sign house systems depending on where you're born and what your specific needs are for your chart based on your unique birth location. I also apply traditional decans and traditional planetary rulers and you can follow along with all of my videos as I share connections and tidbits throughout as we explore the upcoming transits together. Many people have been reaching out and while I do offer private readings for both astrology and tarot, I am completely booked through mid-July. I'll be taking bookings in the near future for mid-July and August. Do keep in mind if you're looking for a one of the deeper packages, the deep diver or more, the price did go up. It also does take me five to seven business days to turn that around. So if you want it for your birthday, do a little reverse engineering, apply that Virgo and Capricorn and work backwards from when you want it with realistically giving me that seven day window so that I can allow the downloads and intuition to come to me over time and work really dedicate the time it takes to put together a 50 page package for you that's all about you I'll also add some information to the description box below I started a Facebook page where I have an outline of my pricing and services so that if you're curious you can start to think about what that cost might be for you and how much of an investment you're at this point wanting to make. I do start my lowest package at just $35. And that's for people who have an open mind, they're curious, they might wanna know their big three, I give you your big six, I give you your moon phase that you're born under. That's for people who are just looking to get their toes wet, that they're they're curious, like some of the stuff resonates from my sun sign, but maybe my sun sign's really deep in my chart, right? And maybe it never really resonated. So I'm lucky, I'm a Libra sun and rising, I was born during sunrise in the middle of Libra season. So Libra always resonated and it will. It's both my expression, my sun, my soul's expression, my sun, and my rising sign, the energy I'm meant to learn and embrace in this lifetime, along with Aquarius. That put me at an advantage because these readings always resonated. So it always piqued my curiosity. Why, how does it know? Imploring me to delve deeper. So anyway, depending on where you are in your journey, how open-minded you are, how deep you wanna go. I have a package from the very shallowest of shallow ends to the deepest of diving pools. And you can take your pick and you can come back and add on things at your own pace. Um, that's how I've designed it, at least for, for me. And I do have a goal to get this YouTube channel to a point where we can monetize it because juggling, oh my goodness, talk about Gemini, Moon, and Mars and juggling things. I feel like an octopus pulled in a million directions lately. Relationship, elderly parent, elderly parents with medical needs, my own medical needs, potential full or part-time position coming up. This, astrology, preparing for all of it, staying in advance, getting the videos out in time and edited, edited, and analyzing charts. I need to clone me. So what I'd really like is to get this channel to a point where we can grow it together, but we're able to also support this work because I, as while it's a side hustle, I would love for it to be my full-time 100% gig, but I do need things like benefits and 
in the country where I live, you are kind of dependent on an employer for things like that, access to, to basic affordable health care, which does make it incredibly challenging for a small business person to get started, especially without any investors or financial backing. With that being said, we blew the last goal of 300 subscribers out of the ballpark. I don't know, I don't wanna to be too ambitious. I also will be traveling quite a bit, so I, I intend to embrace the Jupiter and Taurus and really just be present and and I'll be with a moon and Sag, and he's just so optimistic, and I really feel like I owe it to him and the relationship to not be juggling too much work while enjoying that experience. So uh, with balance, I will be putting out a lot of smaller videos and a lot of other things, and probably changing it up as I'll be more mobile, maybe putting more things on TikTok that I later share here. We'll see, we'll play around with it. I'm open to your feedback. Thank you for letting me know about the audio. It was huge. Fortunately, I saw the comments in time to move things around. That flexibility we're experiencing, right, with this full moon coming up in Sagittarius and the sun in Gemini, this flexibility and adaptability we're needing to apply to our schedules and our deadlines, especially self-imposed ones. If we have the freedom and liberty, like at this point, I am able to move things around a little bit. Um, but in the near future, there may be less flexibility. So finding a balance in what you can move and what is a priority or something that you absolutely can't move. So our last subscriber goal was 300, which we've blown out of the ballpark. Let's shoot for, I don't know, by the next full moon, let's try to get it to 500. That might be too ambitious, but maybe we'll get lucky with this lucky number 13. So today we'll be reviewing the upcoming full moon, 13 degrees Sagittarius, the primary planets involved, the signs and energies, concentrations of energies, and the aspects, the angles that the planets are making to one another and the potential impact that may, might have on the people around you and yourself. We'll review how to best work with the energy, how to flow with it rather than resist or work against it, which is essentially what I do. It's kind of like the weather, but with astrology. I have a journal where day by day, I write down the sun, the moon, the day of the week the planet is associated with. So for Thursday, the day that I'm re-recording this, June 1st, it is Thor's day, Jupiter's day, Jupiter being Zeus. So the focus is on Jupiter and Taurus, which today fuses with the North Node of Fate and Destiny at three degrees. So that's an example of how I use my journal. And if you're interested in this type of thing, and if you're interested in more granular detail-oriented videos where we go day by day, we can absolutely do that. I have been trying to get these videos to be shorter. Um, to no avail. <laughs> Maybe I'm not meant to, but I want to be able to explain the transits to you and also share my little anecdotes because I hope that through the process of reviewing what's coming up and forecasting, I can help teach you a little bit of astrology along the way. And as I have more and more time to put out videos and get better and better at producing them and editing them more efficiently, there will be more videos coming. Um, you can feel free to request things, but I'll be doing educational videos to teach you about basics of how to look up your own chart, how I taught myself completely um, through a very obsessive deep dive the past three years. And a lot of it's intuitive. A lot of it was stuff I had gathered with my very Virgo mind, this like pattern oriented learning, learning through patterns and very, very detail oriented that it just notices things like patterns and energies of people. And like, oh, that's funny. They're both Sagittarius's and they're both optimistic but sometimes toxically so to the point where they completely deny the existence of the shadow not a dig on sag just an observation virgo virgos get called karen more often than any other sign more than likely and it is because they incarnated to service and improve they have this gifted eye for detail that helps them see the little bit little bits of flaws which what they really need to learn is in the delivery. The person has to be open to that criticism and feedback. Otherwise it can come off very unnecessarily critical. Um, it can come out of left field. It can feel abusive in that way. So I think that's where Virgo has some balancing to do. While it is very other focused and very caring and has really good intentions, sometimes it's in the delivery and whether or not the person is able to receive the feedback and criticism that you're delivering. Because we do have to speak to people in their own on their own level, in their own language sometimes, and let them rise up to us. Today we'll be reviewing the upcoming full moon, 13 degrees of Sagittarius, the major planets involved, the angles that the planets are making to one another, the concentrations of energy in various signs, 
and how those angles form aspects and how that might impact us and the people around us. I'll wrap it up at the end with a teaser for what to expect between now and the next lunar cycle, which I may or may not be posting a video for. I'll be traveling and enjoying two back-to-back -back country music festivals. Very lucky, very fortunate indeed. But I may try to put out something smaller and more mobile, like I warned earlier. That date is June 18th. It'll be middle of the night for the East Coast, right around 12.30 a.m. And it'll be in Gemini. We'll have the moon, the sun, moon, and Mercury all aligned in the later degrees of Gemini. So let's start with some themes for the full moon in Sagittarius. Some messages I've been receiving. The truth will out and the truth will set you free. Aligning with authenticity and embracing one's inner truth, which are a way of connecting with the highest self. Connecting with one's intuition, connecting with personal transformation and spirituality, what that may mean to you. Adventure is calling, challenging you to shake free of a fixed mindset or a fixed paradigm and open yourself up. Opportunities may come knocking and they may be unexpected ones with Uranus and Mercury aligning under this transit. You're called to lean into the energy of Sagittarius, into growth, personal development, self-mastery, especially on a spiritual or philosophical level. You're implored to seek knowledge, keep an open mind, and focus on expansion. You're challenged to look for the lesson behind every heartbreak, heartbreak and betrayal, and to focus instead on the positive, the blessing, with gratitude, rather than the negative shadow emotions, because what we focus on, we very much invite more of. Jupiter and Taurus wants to remind you to be present, as does the North Node of Fate and Destiny here in their alignment under this transit at three degrees of Taurus. Be present here and now. There is nothing more grounded and steady and stabilizing than a Taurus, especially a Taurus moon. I've had many I was very close with in this life, including my father, whose moon is on the cusp of Aries and Taurus. So he has a foot of both. He's also born on the first day of Aries season, giving him a lot of Pisces and Aries to balance as well. Is it any wonder his daughter is a Gemini, Moon and Mars, someone who is gifted at understanding, changeability and adaptability, and intuitively understands this in another cusp energy, as I like to call it. This full moon is known as the strawberry moon because it's when strawberries come into season here in the Northern Hemisphere. This strawberry full moon in Sagittarius is at 13 degrees, 13 degrees of karma, or some say 13 degrees of luck. Let me know what you think below. Sagittarius is associated with Orion and the Hunter, and its symbol is the arrow. It's occurring on Saturday, June 3rd, 2023 at 11.42 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Feel free to adjust that based on your time and location. For simplicity, I'll stick with Eastern Standard Time. To review, a full moon is when the moon and sun are opposite one another in the sky. The moon is thus able to cast a mirrored reflection of the light of the sun. This symbolizes a cycle of completion or closure and a revealing of what's been hidden. It's a cycle of completion, the seeds for which were planted six months prior under the new moon in Sagittarius in 2022. That corresponding new moon in Sagittarius occurred on Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022 at 5.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This was the night before Thanksgiving, which as many people where I live in the United States know Thanksgiving is always the fourth Thursday in November and it's a time where we gather together especially Wednesday everyone's running around like crazy you probably don't have off from work that day so you need to go scramble and get the ingredients to come home and prepare and cook for whatever party you're either hosting or attending or traveling to it's craziness but Thanksgiving itself is a time to gather together with friends and or family and or your soul family what you make of it and to give things thanks and to express gratitude and it's a perfect way to dive into Sagittarius season. If you can, look back at your journal for the end of November 2022 to see what was going on. I will share on the screen 
in the background here while we're going. Some of my notes, so you can see what was going on in the background. There was a unique connection involving Venus. Pretty profound. The seeds that we were planting are pretty profound and they're absolutely what I see manifesting under the energy of this new moon. A a pure leaning into the energy of Sagittarius through very dark times. Focusing on that silver lining, focusing on the lesson, focusing on what we have, not what we don't. Really focusing on gratitude and being present. Remember, the past doesn't exist and nor do the resentments you hold for past versions of people because they have changed and evolved just as you have. So it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't do anyone any good to hold on to pain, resentment, any of that. It only poisons yourself in the end. So the challenge here is on focusing on the present and on what you'd like more of. So your mind, what you're thinking, as long as, along with what you're saying, what you're texting, what you're writing, all of that can and will manifest. Are you focusing on all the pain, all the people that have hurt you before, all the mean people at the gym who judge you and make fun of you? Are you focusing on that? Or are you focusing on the opportunity you have to sit in front of this camera and potentially transform lives? The power is completely in your hands. And hopefully I can help model for you that vulnerability, sharing something like that, that you could potentially then use against me. Well, go ahead and try. Go ahead and test me. That's what this is each and every day. They're tests. They're tests to self-mastery. How quickly can we return to center? People are gonna test you. People are gonna try to dim your light every step of the way. You can't let them. You have to remember that it's not just about you, that we're here in this together, Pluto and Aquarius. Back to the full moon in Sagittarius. So remember how we mentioned that Sagittarius can be a little bit toxically positive sometimes? And keep in mind that full moons illuminate. There may be some of us known as the runners in this dynamic, who are going to run right into what they've been avoiding. You won't be able to run anymore. This transit will absolutely shed light on what we've been avoiding and or escaping, especially through toxic substances, food addictions, addictions to alcohol, drugs, etc. All things we use to escape, video games. What we're experiencing is a culmination of a cycle having very much to do with something that was going on back then. This is occurring on the axis of knowledge and communication. Knowledge being Sagittarius, communication and information gathering being Gemini. With the sun in Gemini, this has a lot to do with our logical minds, and what we take in and are focused on and how that affects our communication and our mindset. We have a very busy social calendar. I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but it's like the sun went into Gemini and it's like someone turned on a light switch. All of a sudden, my calendar was jam packed with activities, social obligations, party invites, spontaneous travel plans, concert tickets won. When the sun is in Gemini, it seeks experiences to expand its knowledge, its curiosity, and it seeks to understand. It craves intellectual stimulation. It wants choices and options, and more choices and options are on their way in, as long as you make room for them. You need only remain open to receiving. There's new information coming to light, what was previously held from view or done in the darkness, especially in secret, manipulation, or any misuses of power. It's an expansive opportunity to welcome and invite in more harmony, peace, love, and balance. To become that yourself, embody it, Taurus, and then exude it outward. We have a lot of energy in Leo right now. Leo is all about heart-centered leadership and creative self-expression. It is the best sign at reading the energy in a room and knowing how to capitalize it. Think, capitalize off of it. Think about a performer. When a performer is on stage, it's a symbiotic exchange of energy. The performer, the better they perform, feeds energy out to the audience that the audience receives and in turn feeds back to the performer, who when they're getting positive praise, that's why they're wired for a little bit of external validation. A little external validation is not a bad thing. Take it from someone with a lot of Leo in their chart. It's when it becomes a reliance or a sor primary source of supply that it becomes really dangerous. That exchange, that symbiotic exchange of energy the worse a performer performs, the more the audience shows that and the more it affects their confidence as they receive negative feedback. We've all seen or experienced that in some way. It's one of the many reasons I enjoy going to see live music. I feel like it is my duty to give energy to that performer because what they're providing is clearly a God-given gift and something that I too benefit from. It's the least I can do to feed back into that cycle. We're challenged to embody that energy, be that sun, be the light, be the change, and inspire others, not allowing others to dim 
our light to make them more comfortable in their shadow. It's their pain, it's their anger, it's their shadow. You don't have to absorb it. Absorbing it is the only way that you become it yourself. With the moon in Sagittarius, we're being called to focus on the silver lining in every cloud, reminding us that when we look for good, more good comes to us. Focus on the good to experience more of it. Moon in Sagittarius is a beautiful energy. My boyfriend has this energy in his natal chart. It's an independent, positive, inspiring, and always optimistic. Open-minded, it's adventurous, it loves freedom, and it longs for self-mastery. When the moon is in Sagittarius and it's opposite the sun in Gemini, we're called to embrace change in new horizons. We're invited to expand and tap into that universal flow and to get out of our logical heads and minds and into the flow of the universe and the world around us. We're called to release any rigidity that we're feeling under this grand fixed cross energy involving Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. The sun being in Gemini, we want to look to Gemini's planetary ruler, which is Mercury. Mercury is still in Taurus. It's been in Taurus since April 3rd, and it's taking a good old chill pill in Taurus still, focused on what we love, value, our resources, our money, returning us to appreciation of Mother Earth. But it's coming into conjunction with Uranus, which is electrifying. Perhaps we're lucky that it's in the sign of Taurus. Otherwise, it might be too stimulating. When Mercury and Uranus align, it brings flashes of brilliance, ideation, and innovations. Aquarius is known for its intellect and its ability to make connections very quickly. It's bringing in sudden revelations and developments. Since Mercury is in Taurus and Taurus is ruled by Venus, we also need to consider where Venus is. Venus is in the late degrees, 28 to 29 degrees of Cancer at this point in the transit. And just two days after this full moon, from June 5th, Venus will be reporting to the sun because Venus will be in Leo. Venus will be in Leo from June 5th until my birthday, October 8th, which is a very long time for Venus to be in a sign. That's because we have a Venus retrograde coming. If it sounds scary, it's because it is. All right, maybe I'm feeling all that Leo energy, especially Mars and Leo and, and being a little bit dramatic here. But seriously, I met my karmic twin flame the last time Venus was retrograde. There wasn't a job I didn't take that I didn't regret taking that I started during a Venus retrograde. All of that occurring before I had the power and tools to apply astrology to avoid making such scenarios or say large investments during Venus retrograde, don't do it, you'll regret it, Fi keep the receipt, things to your home, Venus. Needless to say, we can better work with that energy, right, if we know it's coming, especially if it's your chart ruler. If you are a Taurus rising or a Libra rising like myself, Venus is your chart ruler. That's again based on your rising sign. Those who have placements like the sun, moon, other placements will be affected as well, but the rising sign shows you what's coming. It's what's used in predictive astrology. We seem to have a large emphasis on mutable energies under this full moon in Sagittarius. So we have the full moon at 13 degrees Sagittarius, mutable fire, which is in a very close conjunction with the great attractor at 14 degrees of Sagittarius, the rising sign for the United States, which is, if you look back to the day the Declaration of Independence was signed, 12 degrees of Sagittarius, we're having our Pluto return. We've been having our Pluto return for some time now. Um, I'll talk more about that when I put out more Pluto videos, but I just find it so interesting that the US is absolutely on the spotlight or maybe it's just because I live in the U.S. and we always think we're in the spotlight. But it really seems to be the, the fo focal point of receiving some karma right now, especially in terms of our economy, our finances, and things that have to do with Capricorn, big business, and any corruption that may be involved in there. I'll say no more. We also have the galactic center at 27 degrees, 27 minutes of Sagittarius, which is forming a square, putting pressure on Neptune at 27 degrees, 27 minutes, Pisces, which Neptune and Pisces is in rulership there, so it's super strong, and with Saturn also there, it adds emphasis and energy there, with Saturn reporting to Neptune, the more powerful planet in that position. Saturn's actually gonna follow Pisces all the way into 2026, as the two of them travel together into what'll be a bit of Renaissance energy, in 2020, 2025 and 2026, it'll go back and forth between Pisces and Aries, new beginnings, renaissance. Just after a very magical time and creative time during Pisces. 
I'm excited to see what music and works of art will be coming out. Speaking of Saturn, we do have a Saturn retrograde coming up in just two weeks, right before the next new moon. So that is important to note. If you're struggling with any like impulse control, addictions, temptations, triggers, anything maybe you've like, you've cut sugar from your diet or maybe coffee or maybe it's medical marijuana, maybe it's um, stimulants, maybe it's Adderall, maybe you're trying a more natural route, any of those things. Um, alcohol, um, chips, could be, you can get addicted to pretty much anything. Um, cigarettes, nicotine, you name it. Whatever it is that helps you escape, maybe it's work. Maybe you dive into your work instead of doing the emotional work involved to actually like heal stuff. Maybe you're just compartmentalizing and running from it. Maybe it's time, whatever, maybe it's time to really be strict in giving that up because I do think, um, I do think with Saturn and Pisces, reporting to Neptune and Pisces, Pluto about to retrograde through Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. And that being the 29th degree, which is super critical, I do think there's going to be a lot of instant karma for deviations from what we said we were going to do, what we committed to, Taurus. What I'm really seeing here under the energies of Sun and Gemini squared to Saturn and Pisces under the last first quarter moon last weekend and opposite this full moon in Sagittarius, all this squaring immutable energies is really going to call you to, to balance work and play. It's definitely the challenge that I'm going through right now. I rushed to put out that video. I didn't properly audit for sound control. I rushed to put it out, even kind of wondering, like I'm not very auditorially sensitive, but I know a lot of people out there are, and I didn't even consider the fact that that might be really annoying to try to listen to. And so when I saw those comments, I had an opportunity to pivot, to make an adjustment to my plan and routine redo the video it doesn't take that long maybe make it a challenge to record this in under an hour and edit in under an hour as well in two hours boom done it's out maybe it won't take you 10 hours to do every video moving forward if you're able to find a way that's more efficient if you're able to apply that mutable energy make a pivot tiny minor detail to a plan or a bigger long-term routine make sure making it more realistic we're called to embody the energy of Saturn, which rules Capricorn and Aquarius energy, but really is associated with stoic, sometimes seemingly cold, walled off Capricorn. Very hardworking, practical, pragmatic, but probably not in touch with its spiritual side. Versus Pisces, which sometimes seems to have completely dived off the deep end when it comes to spirituality. There's a term woo-woo, some call us delusional because we're so open-minded to each their own. You're called to balance the logical, realistic, practical, pragmatic side of you with, the spirit with your spiritual needs, with your spiritual and creative needs. All right, let's dive into the aspects involved under this full moon. So one of the first ones I notice, and the order doesn't signify importance whatsoever, there's a trine. So this mo full moon in Sagittarius at 13 degrees. So we've got the full moon at 13 degrees of Sagittarius forming a trine in the same element, a harmonious, benefic flow to Mars in Leo. Mars is joining, Mars is at eight degrees of Leo, joining Pallas Athena and Black Moon Lilith around the 13 degree Leo point. So that is a, a perfect trine. And it's a grand fire trine because Chiron is also involved at 18 degrees of Aries. So that I would count that with 13 degrees and 18 degrees. It's a five degree orb. Conjunctions are technically anywhere zero to 10 degrees. So it depends on the level of precision, precision you want to apply. I'm gonna count it, that's pretty cool energy. This trine between Mars and the moon Mars, Moon, and Chiron is bringing tremendous healing in for the Divine Masculine Collective. On one level with the Moon in Sagittarius, seeking more open-mindedness, more big picture thinking, more self-mastery, more expansiveness, and more adventure. Maybe you're seeking a journey. Maybe it's a physical one. Maybe it's a metaphorical one. There isn't a place that I've traveled to that hasn't changed me on some profound level. Maybe you're seeking wisdom, truth, or justice. Make sure it's justice and not revenge. Maybe you have a need for space and you're craving freedom and adventure. 
But because Jupiter is now in Taurus, it's bringing a more grounded, stable, practical, pragmatic, patient, and present energy into the equation, which is working in the same element. So this is a harmonic flow with Mars, a fiery planet, being in a fire sign, Leo. It's good, it's powerful, benefic, but when it's imbalanced, it's a little on the self-centered and narcissistic side. Think about it. The sun is all about creative self-expression. It has no problem prioritizing the needs of the self. Mars similarly rules Aries, very self-first energy. I'm not saying selfish. When in balance, it's selfish. Self-first. It needs to be balanced with Libra, a very other focus sign, which similar to Pisces and similar to Cancer, can give too much, sometimes even Virgo, sometimes even Scorpio, too much of itself. It's too empathetic. It doesn't have the proper boundaries to keep itself in place or understand when things are energetically imbalanced, when someone is taking more than their fair share, taking advantage of a giver. That very much happens in these dynamics. So watch out for that. But because Mars is in Leo, it's also making us more creative and inviting us to dive more into our creative self-expression, whatever medium that may be for you. We're bringing more passion and energy and focus into our relationships and into our daily lives, especially with Venus on its way in. I highly encourage you to tap into some sort of creative outlet at this time. If you're feeling any unease about getting started, I recommend trying automatic writing or applying that to your medium. So meditate before you get started, clear your mind, Keep whatever your medium is, maybe it's your guitar, maybe it's a pad of paper, maybe it's some paint. Keep it nearby and let whatever comes to mind flow out on paper. Keep the logical mind out of it. That can come in later when you bring back the edits. Allow yourself to get into that flow state. You never know what might come out. It might be something profoundly healing, not only for yourself, but for the greater collective and something you could also profit off of. Meditate. Meditate often under these transits. The energy is very heavy right now. When it comes to automatic writing, don't judge it. Don't judge what's coming out. Allow that to come through in the editing process. Whenever you're practicing guitar, singing, dancing, writing, creating of any kind, notice that you get into a flow state and it's almost like magic comes out. But as soon as that logical or critical or overly analytical mind comes too much into the equation, so again, we're balancing that Saturn and Pisces, it blocks the flow. It blocks our ability to receive. You might lose that creativity. You might fall out of sync in that dance. So don't allow judgment or criticism to creep in. Control that mind, Jupiter and Taurus. Be present. You have to first trust that what's coming out is going to be something amazing. Sorry, my south node in Leo, past life Leo energy, Jupiter and Pallas Athena also in Leo, with my sun exalted in the first house, similar to a Leo rising. Had to share that with you. I've been working with a lot of clients lately who have blocked Leo energy and blocked access to their creativity, and this is a pattern I'm noticing. The more in alignment we are, the more accessible our gifts become, be them spiritual gifts or be them creative gifts and talents. The more in flow and in flux we become, the more we're able to access it, and the more we fall out of alignment, where we hold on to negativity, or we focus on the betrayal or the resentment, rather than the positive or the gratitude. What matters is how quickly we return to center. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for subscribing. And if you took anything of value from this video, I hope that you'll find value in these videos as well.